All right, microphone check. You already know, man. Um, this is a conversation with Mr. J Hill. Uh, one of so many, man. You know, I started this thing just to have conversations with creatives, have conversations with people that was um like-minded individuals, and then you know, like it just caught wind, and I've been having some great conversations. And you know, the best thing that I like about this is with the is the conversations with people that you probably wouldn't even have thought of, right? Um, far as my audience, and because that's not to um put anything like down talk anybody else, right? But it's crazy because the people that you aren't that aren't as familiar as the most popular people in the world have pretty much the same or better conversations than those people that are pop popular. But it's like us as media seems like we only go after the ones that got the clout and the name. And I just feel like these conversations show you like how like how a person think and how dope a person is inside and out, whether it's an artist or an entrepreneur. And I feel like those are the things that make people into people would but um with further ado you know what i'm saying my guy still skinny is in the building what's popping dog what's up bro thank nah. thank you for having me already man, man every time somebody say thank you i tell them thank you because you know you guys support me and i always i'm always okay with saying that on camera because you know um it means a lot you feel me nah, like sure. I, like you said anything uh diy is is like i forgot the words you said exactly Ingenious. Ingenious, right? Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I was just saying, like, just making something out of nothing, you know? Right. Um, yeah, that's. But yeah. on top of that, like, making something out of nothing, it, it takes a lot of something to create it, right? So a lot of people don't understand yeah. what the hard work that you're putting in behind the camera or behind the scenes. And the fact that you guys support me helps me continue to be able to do this. Because if I didn't have that support, then I wouldn't be able to have a platform. You get what I'm saying? So anytime somebody, I say that to say, anytime somebody say thank you, I always. Um, extend a hand back and say no thank you because you guys are truly truly helping me like really and I mean that yeah nah um shit I mean we gotta help each other and right. I feel like you know um as artists it's our job to create things that people can you know enjoy everlasting mm. and as um anyone in in this in this game or in this career path that we're choosing being an entrepreneur or being you know your own thinker for for lack of better you know mm. that's a whole another story but basically anyone who's gonna think to be their own boss you should always want to give back or you mm. should always want to at least the people around you that was the coolest with you or the closest to you because right. um everyone doesn't have that insight you know so yeah. And you mm. make music, bro. How long how, how long have you been making music before we get too deep into this conversation? Because I'm going to revisit this. Um, I've been making music a while, a long time. Um, What's a long time? So I would say I started seriously making music when I went to uh, college, mm. and that was in 2013. Mm. So, no, all right, 2014, I, I really started um, seriously trying to trying to put songs together with, with concepts and stuff. But I've, I've been rapping. I've been rapping um, all through. Before I moved to, to Baltimore, I was I was living in uh, PG County in okay. Greenbelt. Before I moved uh, out to Baltimore, I was rapping. When I came out to uh, Baltimore, I was rapping. But I was never, you know. So hold so. up. Wait right there. So two different things, right? I want to ask two different questions, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go one by one. Uh, you was Were you making music before you came to Baltimore, or did you start going to college in Baltimore? I didn't go to college in Baltimore. Okay. But I was making music. When you made that change in your life from PG to Baltimore, you was making music simultaneously. I was just rapping. So I wouldn't even call that making music because mm -hmm. I, I didn't have any records laid. I wasn't writing songs. I was just, oh, you know, a nigga put a beat on and I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm not going to make the beat. I'm going to be the nigga rapping on it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that was just always my vibe. So. I was rapping, but when I I made my first song in high school, um, in in eleventh grade, and uh, uh, it was at my man's shit. You know, it was after school. It it might have been it might have been like ninth grade, mm. but it was definitely early years of high school. But that was, I wasn't taking it serious, you know. So so you said something that was um that stood out to me. You said you know I wasn't making music. I was just rapping. Um, yeah. What's like so? I'm assuming you making your own beats now. Cause you were saying I was just rapping. I wasn't. On, I wasn't the one making the beat. I was just rapping on the beat. Well, um, I don't make my own beats, but what I meant really was I wasn't a full artist. I wasn't um, making songs. I was just kicking verses or you know just ra just rapping shit for real. Like it it was it was it was something like how a nigga would tell a joke in school, 
to get the females to laugh or but he's not a comedian yeah but he's not a comedian okay. you know what i mean he's yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he's just funny though right you know so that was that was kind of and it wasn't like i was doing it for everybody you know and and i wasn't i wasn't in high demand mm. it was more so like the couple niggas that appreciate it because you know it's certain people who appreciate it rapping in a certain way that i did or in a certain way that a group of us did and, and those were the people who would be like yo Go ahead and rap, you know what I mean? Um, or it would be it would be coming out of jokes, like, you know, niggas in the cafeteria, we sitting at the table and, and, and rap it's really a pack, but you know, um it's it's a pack in the form of raps. Right. And I was good at that, you know, and I'd be able to, you know, try to point point things out about a person and just So and that like goes that. that goes directly into my second question. What what do you what are some of the major changes that you've seen? Uh, not only in the industry, the music industry, but within yourself when it came to when you were making music when you first started out to like making music and now and the, the creative process behind it, uh, how people treat you, everything. Like literally, like talk to me about the changes that you've seen throughout your career. Um, I would say there's been a big change in the way I've been perceived because um, it was very much uphill battle. Mm. I, I went from... Um, and, and, and not to say that I'm at, at this plateau where I'm wherever I need to be, but I'm I'm striving to ascend. But um, I went from not really being acknowledged for rapper because rapper was never and still is far fetched as a serious profession, mm -hmm. something you can really do to make money for your family. So, I mean, my whole family. I mean, not my whole family. They're supportive of whatever I do, but at the same time, you know, rapper is just not something that people want to hear so what's I, your origin what, what you what you are you from uh well my my family's from dc okay my, my mother and my father from northwest okay. uptown dc and i I'm, i lived in oxen hill then i lived in um greenbelt but you're american like oh oh yeah yeah no nah, okay. I'm, I'm american oh well okay. i ain't done my uh <laughs> Your ancestry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I'm. I think are we? Who's American, really? Right, facts. You know, we so, black. We African. I don't even think. We, you know what I'm saying? I'm not American, actually. <laughs> We're gonna just go with that, but I don't know what no, I, I feel am. You, I feel I'm gonna find so, out. So, but you were bro. you were raised in? I was raised in, in this this DMV okay. area for Got sure. You. But I've spent my majority in Baltimore. I did my my middle school and high school. I ask you that um, because you know some cultures are different, right? Like you know, like. Um, in some cultures, being a rapper or artist is looked at as like a serious thing, right? But in a lot of other cultures, it's like their parents don't even allow, well, not even allow, but they would shun you for saying you want to be an artist. They they would shun you for wanting to be anything outside of a doctor or a lawyer, yeah. right? So like when you said that, I'm like, damn. It, oh, okay, it, I get, I get what you're saying. That. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, nah, I mean, I just think that my my parents wanted the best for me, mm. and it was more so like you don't have to you you can be anything you want, but not but not that right. Some don't you, you know what I mean? Anything you you want, can be but anything this. you want. They but limitations and, on and even if you're trying to do this, okay, we got your back, but have a backup. Plan. Are you sure? <laughs> like, is that really what you really want to do? Mm. And that's and that's you know something where it makes you second guess. Like um, kind of uncomfortable, right? Am I really? You know, because these are the people that you that you care about the most, and mm -hmm. their opinions hold the most weight. Because um, everybody's opinion shouldn't hold weight in your in your own life. That's a but fact. um, certain people should, and um, yeah. So that was that was. So you think from you know that was a hard struggle. You know, I'm sorry. To, no, you good. You good. That was one of my hardest struggles into being taken more seriously because even past the social element and whether I'm thriving or failing if my if my if my mom and you know what I mean my father and them was like you need to get this CDL or you you know what I mean like nigga you tripping it's like even if all my all my my good homies and shit is like you going crazy bro that song was damn I seen the perf they, it doesn't even like I'm like thanks bro it's more so like a a nigga telling you they like your outfit. All right, you know. Yo, bro, you know. it's crazy because like having these. This is why these conversations are so dope, right? And not, I'm not, I'm no therapist or anything, but like you can see the pattern, kind of like you wanting, or not even wanting, right? But it's like at first you want that validation from your parents, right? Because that's what we see first. We want our validation from our parents. We want to feel like we matter and, and at home. Yeah, when for we sure. tell them our dreams and our goals, and and they are not as receptive. Now they automatically triggers or, or creates a, um what's the word it creates a a, a a vision in our mind that 
nobody cares. And when somebody does care, it's not real, right? Because you're saying that your friends were saying, yeah. yo, this is dope. Can, and it's like you kind of was yeah. like pushing it to the side. Do you think that's because you wasn't getting that originally from your parents? So because you wasn't getting that from your parents, when you did get it, you ain't think it was real because you didn't really, you couldn't really see it. It's that. And it's also, I'm not getting spun. Like, I'm not, mm-hmm. like, I'm letting these out other outer layer Damn. things that I haven't really gotten to yet really mess because I want to prove it. Mm-hmm. I want to be like, yeah, nah, this is, they like this song for real. And it's just, it's never big enough because okay. it's not the biggest yet. Damn. So I think it was, it was even deeper than, because I did appreciate all the recognition and it did make me continue to spend my money on the studio and whatever else, you know, but at the same time, I'm like, damn, like I'm looking at I'm looking at Instagram, I'm seeing Uzi, I'm seeing I'm seeing whoever. I'm seeing Cardi, I'm seeing uh just the, the whatever rapper or artist that is in my eyes thriving the way I aspire to thrive, you know what I mean? And not to say those two artists are directly, but I'm just saying as contemporaries of mine, those are the people I'm looking at, like, okay, I'm I'm right there. Like, mm. but I'm holding myself back from opportunities as well. Because I'm scared to go out of state. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm bluffing for real because, like, I'm like, damn, I'm ready. I don't got it for real. So I'm, I'm about to go. Monetary wise, right? Yeah, monetary wise. So without the without the mental support, I can't fully go for broke. Mm. So now I'm doing a job and rapping, and I'm doing. And not to say you should. I'm still working now. You should always work and make money. But I'm taking a job more. Serious. I'm making a job, making nigga tired. Mm. Tired is a, is an excuse. Mm. I'm I'm saying that I can't, you know what I mean. I'm just coming up with things because I'm really depressed and I really want. I, I should be on the radio. I should, but that's a, a defeated way of thinking. Mm. Yo, it's crazy you know? because I know management is probably like music, music, music. But like these the con- these are the conversation that make people attracted to a person, which then gets them on your music and, and love who you are when you're making the music. It, in my personal opinion, I feel like when somebody knows who you are, then they will take whatever you got, if that makes sense, right? Like, a lot of times people no, buy into the person before they buy into the artist. They buy into the person before they buy into the merchandise, before they buy into the music. And I feel like these are the conversations that I would love to have. And the fact that you, you're able to say, you know, like, it's kind of depression. And I'm like, how do you how do you get out of that? Because it's easy to say we shouldn't take social media serious, but I mean, in a world of fucking coronavirus and COVID nineteen, what do you mean take don't take social media serious? That's all we got, right? Yeah. How do you tap out? How do you unplug so you aren't as depressed um, as you was or as you once were? The the music, which mm. is funny, because that's how this shit co- goes it in a full back, circle. Right, yeah. Because then I'm like, I just got, I'm gonna write a song about this shit. Mm. And then that's, I started just having the whole rack of songs. And mm. then even if I don't feel up to recording them, I'm still writing them. Now I'm sitting on songs. Then I go to the studio. Now it's like I'm, everybody like, damn, he's having this explosion of <laughs> music. And everything sounds great. But I'm sitting with these, I'm writing these songs for days because I'm frustrated, really. And I know that I might write, like, with my writing process, I might write four or five lines on a song and they'd be like, man, fuck this song. I'm, mm. You know what I mean? I don't delete it or nothing, but I'm not about to keep writing to it if I can't feel it. And then sometimes it's five minutes, you know? So it's it's weird like that, but at the same time, I found mainly when I'm my, an emotion is evoked, I, I can write the quickest so I can make the best song. So mm. a lot it of the times like I do like that. you're an emotional person or like not in a negative way, but you're you're just tapped into your emotions. And I feel like a lot of people, a lot of men, we aren't. I feel like we're scared of our emotions. We're scared to show our emotions. We're scared to even say that we have them because we associate emotions with a with with feminine. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. although that may that may that could be right, but it's okay to have a masculine and a feminine side. That's what makes us human. I don't know if you read the book, um, The Way of the Superior Man, but it talks about that a lot in that book. And I just see that in you, and I think that's dope. So let's get into the music, right? You said you write a lot, so yeah. that that means you always making music. Right. And I think when you sat down, I was like, I think I seen like three projects of yours or something like that. And you like three. All right. Because I got a hell of more. And I'm like, damn, how many I was thinking, like, how many projects do you have right now that you're pushing? That I'm pushing currently. Yeah, yeah. I'm pushing my latest release mm-hmm. project wise um, is the Reup Arcade. That's the album I dropped. Uh, I want to say last summer, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it's it's just it's a very sentimental piece to me because wow. like it, it, yeah. it was it was uh highly curated with my team you know what i mean my uh, my, my manager 
and uh, along with, with uh, the other people very close in my life, you know, and I was, I was playing the records for them, and um, I was just really having fun, and, and I was able to come up with this, um, what I like to call a theme, you know, for the album, mm. and that's that's something I work towards, and I feel like this is probably the best time, the, one of the best, better ones I've done, where I uh, incorporated a lot of arcade sounds and um, interludes and stuff like that. I even got like clips from, uh, like when I I used to work at, at Advanced Auto Parts. Um, I was, you know, you know, they changed your uh, battery and all that. <laughs> you can so, pull up and they, they come uh, out. Yeah, I was. I just had that done. Your ODB <laughs> I just had and that all that. So, um, one day I was, I, and I didn't have a car at the time, and I was, I used to catch the bus mm -hmm. um, on Rice's Town Road out um, to where I, I stayed. I stayed in uh, Kings Park in Randallstown. So. It was a little bop for real. It's right there if you're driving, but like the bus just do the most. Like you got get on one bus, get on yeah. the MTA, mm -hmm. get on another bus, all the way down Milford just to go all the way back up Liberty. It's it's a lot. Yeah. But um, long story short, I'm waiting on the bus stop. This like I don't know if the nigga was homeless or what. He was definitely fucked up though. Like he just come up to me, he's talking to me, and I'm I'm um one thing about me is I I don't shy away from a conversation. Like mm -hmm. I like talking to people. I don't know. If that is in my like, um, like just nature or whatever, but I I'll talk to you if you, like I don't know I don't have that social anxiety where it's like oh they're gonna think I don't you know I like to see what you, what you, what you, what's on your mind your brain, yeah yeah so that's a whole other thing so that's why I'm talking to this homeless dude right and I'm like yeah I make music man I'm still skinny da 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 he like okay man uh still skinny you got it going on uh, <laughs> he says some shit like that and I was like oh that uh, that was funny like and I recorded him. I had him do it again, and mm -hmm. I recorded him, and I, I put that on the interlude. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and then I, uh, I had my manager. He's he's shopping my music, not really shopping my music. He playing my music for my for one of his homeboys. They doing some type of work. The dude just break out into some type of like monologue shit, like really like really rooting for me. Like, bro, would it sound like that? Would it flow like this? You gonna make it, bro? Like he's like he's like really saying some like. I don't Prolific know this nigga. Shit, right? I don't know this nigga though. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, this it hit harder though, cause I'm like, you know, yeah, I don't know. know if this is my brother, I'm like, thank you, yeah. bro. You know, yeah, right. you know how long I've been doing. But it means a lot coming from somebody that you don't know. Right. The energy is meshing, right? Uh -huh. And these are prior to the to the album. Mm. So I'm pulling this out my archives on Instagram. I done archived it. It's, it's in the past. I'm like, yeah, I remember the. I remember they did that. I remember they did that. And I and I I, I formulated this interludes, the uh, you know, thematic interlude f for lack of better words and um i was very proud of that as, along along with the songs bro it's crazy but that's why your mind right you know how they say um real recognize real right so yeah. like when you come in and you you appreciate the setup it shows though because you're you're the same guy that's going to be able to speak to a homeless guy he say something they'll hold up let's record that you yeah know, hear somebody talking about um your project and you as an artist hold up Let's record that because it's like you kind of already a visionary, right? A lot of people is different. I um I used to call myself a creative and I stopped because I'm like, you know, being creative is somebody that creates something. I'm a visionary. I bring things to life, right? Like I have it in my, my mind and then I create something to to match what I saw in my mind to bring it to life, right? So like I, what I when I hear you speak, I hear visionary and it's like, yo, of course you're going to appreciate a DIY because your entire life, your entire career, you're creating it yourself. You're doing it yourself, yeah. right? But at the same time, we talked about um, just the emotions behind that. How does it feel when you put all of this energy into something and you don't get what you think you deserve out of it? Like, and I feel like we spoke on it a little bit, but when you made that project, you said it, it felt so great. What was the response like for you? And was it what you expected? I was, I was, <laughs> I was disappointed in the response, mm. but I blame myself because there's – there's a million ways to get your song in front of somebody. Mm. And I only probably did about 50. You know what I mean? I like it. In, I in it. my mind, that's how I'm taking the L because I don't think, I think it slept on because I don't think I, 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 I set any alarms. I didn't reach out to anybody. I didn't reach out to enough people. I, mm. I, reach, I reached out to the same people. You know what I mean? So I was not happy with the response but the music is not gone, mm. and you know I haven't. I, I, it's a lot I haven't done to work to work the project. So I fucking love his energy. I love like I like you know how you saying like energy is real, and like I love it because like a lot of people aren't. 
holding that self accountable, right? Like a lot of people say, man, fuck that. These niggas ain't fuck with me. It's my last project. But the fact is like, man, look, it was good, but I ain't put enough out to get to get my roses, right? I ain't put yeah. enough out to, to reap what I sow because I just ain't do enough. I fuck with it. And I, feel, I think you're going to, well, I, not, I think, I know you're going to go a long way if you continue with, to keep that attitude. I definitely appreciate you for uh, supporting me, like I said. Um, and is there anything else that you wanted to get off your chest? As you um, take your your Tito's, you already t you already still skinny, man. It's, the Tito's is like it's like uh, I, when you on a diet. Don't you drink that when you on a diet? Like get this man some Hennessy, like you know what look, I'm saying? man. I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I don't drink like that. Okay, okay. <laughs> it makes sense. That's why you got the Tito's. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't drink like that. Okay, but uh, I will say this. I'm very thankful for uh, the opportunity to have a conversation with you. Mm. I've been following everything that you've been doing as far as, you know, just creating opportunities for people not only of, you know, our ethnicity, but from our area and stuff. And, like, that's that's really dope. And that's going to take you even further than, you know, than you're going. So. Oh, man, I'm going to the... Uh to like the moon. No, nah, for sure. Back and come get some people. And for sure. Back. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be up there with time. you. All right, back. <laughs> we're gonna, we just gonna have to come. We're gonna have to be grabbing people. Like, ain't bro. No feelings, ain't no feelings. Ain't no limitations on this motherfucking planet. Nah, for sure. The oh, there is one more thing I do want to say. I have a single out called Irate. Um, I probably dropped it uh, in, uh, December 20, around Christmas. Around Christmas. So I just shot a video that's coming out soon. It's being very well received. If you, anyone, Who's listening to this? Uh, check out our rate, mm. um, and, it's, and you're just gonna look that up on all streaming platforms, even on YouTube, even on your mother's phone, Man. or your father's phone, and it's gonna be <laughs> irate, I R A T E. Um, yeah, it's by Still Skinny, and, and yeah, thank you, Not thank no you problem. for everything. Yo, just let the people know where to follow you at on social media. And okay, yeah, for well. sure. So follow me at Still Skinny. Um, that's Still S T I L L Skinny with an I. Okay. Okay. Um, you already know, man. I appreciate you again. Uh, conversation series, Mr. J Hill. Yo, uh, continue to tune in. Continue to tap into these people because these people have dope conversations, man. And they just dope people, man. That's what we do. Dope people create dope conversations. And um, that's all I got for you as a rap. We out. <laughs>